Oakland, a mixing pot of people and cultures, with the city offering bay views, skyscrapers, and even redwood lined lakes enjoyed by millions each year. When it comes to a potential for a wide variety of hazmat calls, the team in Oakland, California at fire station number three is ready. Oakland is home to over 440,000 people with an international seaport, industrial railroad lines, business failures from the ongoing pandemic, and a homeless crisis that is affecting cities all over our great nation. Fire station number three is experienced and out on hazmat calls daily. They even have a dedicated truck just for the calls relating to chemical and fluid dumps around the city. Let's join Dan and Mike, two of the leads on Oakland's fire station number three's big green hazmat team. Hi, good morning. My name is Mike Scott. I'm with the Oakland Fire Department on the Hazmat Team. I'm a Hazmat Specialist. Dan Keenan, also on the Hazmat Team with Oakland Fire. This is our Hazmat One. It's our primary vehicle for uh, uh, first response to a fairly large Hazmat incident. In here we have our entry team. Our entry team rides in this vehicle so they can get eyes on what's going on, start getting ready, start getting their suits out for suiting up and go going into the incident. So. Uh, as soon as we arrive, the entry team will get busy. Uh, the first thing, of course, they want to do is get medically monitored and get in their PPE. This is how we store our, uh, all of our chemical protective equipment. One, two, three. And so if you get a close-up on here, this is uh, some of the accessory equipment, the knee pads, the tingly boots, the silver. Uh, nit or the silver gloves, the uh, nitrile gloves, all that. And then we have our level A, level B. Uh, everything's uh, been inspected and checked, and so it's all ready to go. Uh, we know everything's been pressure tested. Uh, and we'll set up a, um, uh, in a cold zone, an area that they'll start getting dressed in the back. We have it all kind of. So when the guys get ready to go do entry, we have our bottles back here, SCBA <coughs> bottles back here. We have our toolbox here with our beryllium tools in it. On this side, we have our sample kit. This is our sample kit. In this kit, we have already made up sampling items for quick sampling for quick entries. They're already in packets and labeled. If they need more, we bring in this whole box in on our entry. If they need tools to shut off a valve or to tighten up a valve or to stop a leak, they can do it with a simple tool kit. All our mitigation tools in this box. If they need more, they can radio, radio us back and then we can bring in more tools for them. As far as... Uh getting ready to uh, outfit them with um, all of our monitoring equipment. You know, we would get these turned on prior to leaving the actual station so that our, our uh, rad meters can be up and running, ready to go. We don't store them with the batteries in them. And so we uh, quickly add some batteries to our, our meters, get them up and running, and then... These are turned on before we even leave the station so we can get an area of radiological of the whole area. It'll, it'll do that. As soon as we arrive, we'll start uh, doing our bump check on our uh, our air monitoring equipment. Everything's on trickle charge in here. We'll use one of our um, our trays that pulls out here as a table to set up our equipment.
So we'll start laying out our equipment, get it uh, trickle charged. I mean, get it, uh, get it bump checked. And uh, get the team outfitted as quickly as possible. So this is sort of a rapid uh, deployment vehicle to get an entry team. Every piece of equipment on here is designed to rapidly get the entry team in a suit, uh, equipped with their monitoring equipment, whatever tools they need, and get them to the uh, uh, the front of the uh, the hot zone there, and uh, so that they can make entry as fast as possible. That's what this rig was designed for. You don't find other equipment here, like decon equipment, that kind of stuff. That's going to be our other rig that we would uh, send out. So as, as the incident progresses and they've made entry, say it's going to be a long, long entry. We have our area arrays that we can set up. Um, we also have um, the air monitors. We'll connect the computers like most, most do so we can monitor the air around us. Um, we do plume modeling also to see where the cloud may go um, so we can get downwind of it. And if we do have to do any evacuations, we can do the evacuations. Um, we also carry some WMD stuff up here. We also, uh, just like everybody else, it's ready to go right here in case they need to make entry with that. Of course, they make entry with the M8, M9, uh, the oxidizer paper, pH paper, uh, and all the monitors. Yeah, we love our AP4C and our Pro Engine. That's a really great instrument there for uh, WMD. Uh, we have a uh, explosive detector. Okay, right there, our Fido. So these guys are, you know, for more specialized uh, uh, incidents, we can outfit them with uh, that, that equipment as well. Um, but it's all for very, very fast deployment. If we have solids and liquids that have spilled or need mitigating, you know, of course we carry our, uh, our Ramon spectroscopy units, our responder, our uh, Ahura. We have a... Uh, our MX-908 down here. Of course, our, our Hazcat kit. So all this can get loaded on a cart and go in with the entry team and uh, we'll be ready to go. So we practiced getting an entry team in suits equipped with their monitoring equipment, their field ID equipment, uh, their RAD equipment, and we can knock it out upon arrival probably in about 15 minutes or so, and the entry team's ready to go. How do we make the safest suits? By developing the most innovative fabrics in the industry and improving upon them year after year for over 45 years. Designed to be the most comfortable and easy to don products available expertly crafted by some of the highest skilled workers in the world right here in America. We never forget that everyone who dons a Kapler suit has a family waiting at home. That's why we ensure every stitch, seam, and piece of fabric meets stringent quality standards. Our latest Durachem suits provide maximum chemical protection at an affordable price. For the most challenging hazmat calls, you deserve the best suit. As George Kapler said in 1976, we keep bad stuff off people. And at Kapler, we continue that tradition today. Our Kapler suits are located right here. Just like uh, our utility equipment, we have them ranges from size small to 2X, 3X. Uh, we keep those tagged out, locked out, but we'll, we'll, we'll show you. Um, so we know exactly what's in here because it was stored and um, they were checked. And these are the nicest suits that I've worn. <laughs> They're very, very comfortable. A lot better than the, the other level. Ah, well. The one suit. Yeah, one, the one <laughs> fogged suit. Up, yeah. Fogs up so much. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we've gone through a lot. DuPont, Kepler. Yeah. Anyways, we like these. Yes, these are anti-fog. 
Alright, uh... On the top of our vehicle, we have our, our swimming pools and uh, mass, or quick decon. Yeah, quick um, decon, not really. Quick, not really a, a, for the large decon, but a quick decon if we have to. We have some pools up there and a shower unit up there but also. But also our vetter equipment, our, um, for, uh... Rail stopping, cars you know, or stopping larger rail leaks. leaks and yeah. tank car leaks. Our pressure bandages, our pressure, uh, uh, plugs, that kind of stuff. We can we can show you up upstairs what it looks like. We did miss that. We have a, we have uh, several Cromwell kits also for patching, plugging pipes. We have we keep those right here. They're ready available. We have some on this side and some on the other side on a pull out tray just like this one. Um, so these are ready available also for quick entry. We have a very active railway through in and out of Oakland. We have our uh, A, B, and C kits on this side and the other side on pull-out trays that we can load up into a cart and then either hoist up on top of a rail car, handle a, uh, a one-ton container, or a cylinder of, uh, of chlorine gas. So we're pretty much ready to go on that. Uh, so every tool that the, the entry team uh, may conceivably need is going to be on this fairly small rig. Uh, we have actually a canopy we can set up and a tent that they can dress in if they need modesty. That's all up on top. It, it sets up real quickly too. It's just a pop-up tent with sides and, uh, and we'll just set up a dressing area. These double as their chairs oftentimes for once you uh, get the suits out and you got to get your boots on, get your medical monitoring done. Uh, we can sit on these boxes, nice broad so you don't fall off of them. And so, uh, what else Michael? Uh, right here, everybody has these, our responder's vest. Uh, the incident commander can hand these out as people arrive on scene for our side access control, for our safety officer, for our uh, tech ref, for all the, uh, those uh, disciplines that we have on a hazmat grounds. So those are right here located in the, in the, in the first vehicle because as those people arrive, it's necessary to get them in the proper, proper gear. And we have pretty much duplicates of everything. We have a very uh, robust training program, a refresher training program in the Oakland Fire Department for our hazardous materials team. Uh, we staff about 45 or so hazmat spec techs throughout the department. There are uh, eight on duty here every day. Our minimum is six as far as staffing goes. But we'll have uh, uh, duplicates of all of this equipment for the most part. Yeah, that we can add, throw onto the rig for a training exercise. We do quarterly refresher training, so they get a solid 24 hours every year. And uh, we're going to give you that. I'll show you how we go about uh, getting everybody through that quarterly uh, quarterly training, uh, refresher training once a year. We actually modeled. Uh, we we went from a large RV style hazardous materials rig, uh, and we found that there were areas in the city that were hard to access in the hills and in the port of Oakland uh, with that large vehicle. We saw how the uh, our local 95th civil support team uh, modeled their response vehicles and we copied them uh, with this vehicle and so we actually can send out two uh, members per vehicle if we have to. We have four vehicles so we can send out all eight real quickly if we need to uh, but this is designed you know initially perhaps for four for the entry team and uh, you can actually fit five in here if you want the uh, entry team leader in here as well. That wraps up the first part of our day with Dan and Mike in Oakland. Next we'll be checking out specialty equipment such as their Stinger trailer setup for offloading fuel tanker trucks. Like and subscribe so we can continue to help hazmat teams and first responders every day. See you next time on scene with Hazmat Roadshow TV.